In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to focus on rectifiers, need for rectification, types of rectifier, that is half wave, full wave, bridge rectifier, and filter circuit. Many electronic gadgets like laptops, mobile phones, etc. work on DC supply. Hence, AC supply must be converted into required DC supply for proper functioning of these devices. But how do we do it? This task is achieved by a circuit called as rectifier. Peter Cooper Hewitt first invented the mercury arc rectifier, which was further developed by researchers in Europe and North America throughout the 1920s and 1930s. Let's first understand the concept of AC and DC signals. AC or alternating current is a signal that continuously varies in sinusoidal shape with respect to time. When it goes above the zero line, we get the positive magnitude of the signal, called the positive half of the AC signal. And when the signal goes below the zero line, we get the negative magnitude of the signal, referred to as the negative half. DC or direct current, on the other hand, has a constant magnitude, which is independent of time. So let's see how to convert the varying AC signal into a constant DC signal using rectifier circuits. Rectifiers are of two main types, half-wave rectifier and full-wave rectifier. Rectifier circuits are made up of few basic components. Let's see them one by one. Consider an AC signal input. The next component is the transformer. Every transformer has two sides, primary and secondary. Input is applied on primary and output is taken against secondary. Here we use the step-down transformer. It is called as step-down because the number of coils at primary is greater than the number of coils at secondary. The specifications of a transformer are given in terms of turns ratio. If turns ratio is 12 is to 1, it means that the transformer transforms 12 volts of input signal to 1 volt of output signal. In rectifiers, diodes act as a switch. If the diode gets connected in forward bias, it acts as a closed switch. And if it connected in reverse bias, it acts as an open switch. When these three components, the AC signal, the transformer and diode are connected, we get the circuit of a half-wave rectifier. The output is obtained across the resistor that acts as a load. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now let's understand the working of a half-wave rectifier. During positive half of the input signal, point A is at higher potential than point B. Hence, anode of the diode receives more voltage than the cathode, which makes the diode forward biased and acts as a closed switch and allows the current to flow through it. Thus, we obtain the exact replica of the input signal with lower amplitude due to the step-down transformer. During negative half of the input signal, point B is at higher potential than point A. This makes the diode reverse biased and it acts as an open switch which does not allow the current to flow. Hence, during the reverse bias mode, we get zero output. As we get the rectification only on half part of the input, this circuit is called as a half-wave rectifier. Now, let's go for the mathematical analysis of the half-wave rectifier. Here, we derive the expression for DC, or average value of load current denoted by IDC. The RMS value of load current denoted by IRMS, output voltage VDC, rectifier efficiency neta, ripple factor R, peak inverse voltage, and voltage regulation. For calculating the average or the DC value of a current waveform, we have to determine area under the curve over one complete cycle. That is from 0 to 2 pi and dividing the base that is 2 pi. Mathematically, the current waveform is described as IL is equal to IM into sine theta for the values of theta between 0 to pi 
and i l is equal to zero for the values of theta between pi and two pi. So the DC current is given by the equation I D C is equal to one upon two pi integration zero to two pi I L D theta. As the waveform is divided into two parts, we get the two integrals as one upon two pi integration zero to pi I L D theta plus integration pi to two pi I L D theta. For zero to pi I L is equal to I M sine theta and for pi to two pi it's zero. Thus the second term vanishes and substituting for the first term we get I D C is equal to one upon two pi integration I M sine theta D theta. I M comes from out of integration as a constant and the integration of sine theta is minus cos theta. So the integration becomes I M upon two pi minus cos theta from zero to pi. We substitute the values zero and pi at the place of theta and we get the equation as I D C is equal to I M upon pi. Now let's find the equation from RMS current. It is given by the formula I RMS is equal to square root of 1 upon 2 pi integration 0 to 2 pi I L square D theta. Squaring both sides we get I RMS square is equal to 1 upon 2 pi integration 0 to 2 pi I L square D theta is equal to integration 0 to pi I L square D theta plus integration pi to 2 pi I L square D theta. As the second term is 0, we get 1 upon 2 pi integration 0 to 2 pi I M square sine square theta D theta. Again, I M comes out of integration as it's constant and the integration for sine square theta is 1 minus cos 2 theta upon 2 D theta. On solving the integration further and putting the values, we get the expression I R M S is equal to I M upon 2. Now let's find the expression for the output voltage VDC. VDC is equal to IDC into RL. Substituting the value of IDC we get VDC is equal to IM upon pi into RL. Substituting the value of IM we get VDC is equal to VM upon RF plus RS plus RL into pi where R is equal to winding resistance. RF is equal to forward resistance of the diode. Rearranging the term, we get the expression. Now as RF and RS are very small as compared to RL, we can neglect them. Thus the final expression is VDC equal to VM upon pi. The rectify efficiency is given as the ratio of DC output power to AC input power. Now DC output power is given by the formula IDC square into RL and AC input power is given by the formula IRMS square into RF plus RS plus RL. Substituting the value of IRMS in terms of IM we get the equation. Thus the efficiency becomes IM upon pi square into RL upon IM upon 2 square into RF plus RS plus RL. On solving, we get meter is equal to 0 0.406 upon 1 plus RF plus RS upon RL. Neglecting the RF and RS, we get meter is equal to 0 0.406. Thus, half wave rectifier gives 40.6% efficiency. The next term that we derive here is the ripple factor. It is given by the equation R is equal to RMS value of AC component upon average or DC component. Now IRMS is given by square root of IAC square plus IDC square. Rearranging the expression in terms of IAC we get. Thus the equation of R becomes square root of IRMS square minus IDC square upon IDC. Rearranging the terms we get the final equation R is equal to square root of pi square upon 4 minus 1 which is equal to 1.21. Next term used is peak inverse voltage, which is defined as the maximum voltage that appears across the diode when it is reverse biased. Its value is Vm for the half wave rectifier. The last term is percentage voltage regulation. 
The voltage regulation is the factor which tells us about the change in the DC output voltage as the load changes from no load to full load condition. It is given by the formula percentage voltage regulation is equal to no load voltage minus full load voltage upon full load voltage into 100. As we saw, using a half wave rectifier, we can only rectify half of the input. But this is not the desired output. So let's see the second type of rectifier, that is the full wave rectifier. In a full wave rectifier, we use the center tap transformer. This transformer has three terminals, S1, S2 and C. Two are the secondary terminals and the third terminal is taken out exactly from the center of the secondary windings. Hence the name center tap transformer. The central terminal C is always connected to the ground. During positive half, S1 has positive value and S2 has negative value. Whereas it's vice versa during the negative half. Full wave rectifier consists of two diodes instead of one. Now let's see the working of this full wave rectifier. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. During the positive half of the input signal, point A attains a positive voltage and point B attains a negative voltage. Thus diode D1 becomes forward biased and acts as a closed switch whereas a diode D2 becomes reverse biased and acts as an open switch. Thus during positive half, the current flows through diode D1 and follows the path S1 to point A. A to point D through diode D1, D to E through load resistance RL, then from E back to point C producing the same output as that of the half wave rectifier. But during the negative half, the situation reverses. Point B attains a positive value and point A becomes negative. Thus D2 becomes forward biased and acts as a closed switch and D1 becomes reverse biased and acts as an open switch. Hence the current flows through the diode D2 only. Tracing the path S2 to point B, B to point D through diode D2, point D to E through load resistance R1 and point E back to point C. As during both the halves, the current follows in the same path through the load, that is point D to point E. We get the same positive output during the negative half also. As we get the output for the full input signal, this rectifier is called as a full wave rectifier. Now let's go to for the mathematical analysis of this full wave rectifier. Here again we derive the expression for all those terms which we studied during the analysis of a half wave rectifier. For a full wave rectifier, the cycle repeats after the interval of pi. Mathematically, the current for the full wave is described as IL is equal to IM into sine theta for the values of theta between 0 to pi. So the DC current is given by the equation IDC is equal to 1 upon pi integration 0 to pi ILD theta. As we consider only a single interval, we get only one integral for the full wave rectifier, which is IDC is equal to 1 upon pi integration IM sine theta d theta. IM comes out of integration as a constant and the integration of sine theta is minus cos theta. So the integration becomes I m upon pi minus cos theta from 0 to pi. Now we substitute the values 0 and pi at the place of theta and we get the equation as IDC is equal to 2 I m upon pi. Now let's find the equation for RMS current. It is given by the formula I RMS is equal to square root of 1 upon pi integration 0 to pi I L square d theta. Squaring both sides, we get I RMS square is equal to 1 upon pi integration 0 to pi I L square d theta is equal to integration 0 to pi I M square sine square theta d theta. Again, I M comes out of integration as it is constant and the integration for sine square theta is 1 minus cos 2 theta 
upon 2d theta. On solving the integration further and putting the values, we get the expression I RMS is equal to IM upon root 2. Now let's find the expression for the output voltage VDC. VDC is equal to IDC into RL. Substituting the value of IDC, we get VDC is equal to 2IM upon pi into RL. Substituting the value of IM, we get VDC is equal to 2VM upon RF plus RS plus RL into pi, where RS is equal to winding resistance and RF is equal to forward resistance of the diode. Rearranging the term, we get the expression. Now as RF and RS are very small as compared to RL, we can neglect them. Thus the final expression is VDC equal to 2VM upon pi. The rectify efficiency is given as the ratio of DC output power to AC input power. Now DC output power is given by the formula IDC square into RL. And AC input power is given by the formula IRMS square into RF plus RS plus RL. Substituting the value of IRMS in terms of IM, we get the equation. Thus efficiency becomes 2IM upon pi square into RL upon IM upon root 2 square into RF plus RS plus RL. On solving, we get Nita is equal to 0 0.812 upon 1 plus RF plus RS upon RL. Neglecting the RF and RS, we get Nita is equal to 0 0.812. Thus, full wave rectifier gives 81.2% efficiency. Next term that we derive here is the ripple factor. It is given by the equation R is equal to RMS value of AC component upon average or DC component. Thus, the equation for R becomes square root of IRMS upon IDC square minus 1. Rearranging the terms, we get the final equation R is equal to square root of pi square upon 8 minus 1, which is equal to 0 0.48. The next term is peak inverse voltage, which is defined as the maximum voltage that appears across the diode when it is reverse biased. It is equal to 2 Vm for full wave rectifier and equal to Vm for bridge rectifier. The last term in percentage voltage regulation. The voltage regulation is the factor which tells us about the change in DC output voltage as the load changes from no load to full load condition. Percentage voltage regulation is equal to no load voltage minus full load voltage upon full load voltage into 100. Now let's move on to the next rectifier. This rectifier is nothing but the special type of full wave rectifier. This rectifier consists of four diodes instead of two and we use the normal step down transformer which we have already studied in the half wave rectifier. Let us study about the special type of full wave rectifier. As this rectifier forms a structure like a bridge, it is called as a bridge rectifier. While drawing the diagram of a bridge rectifier, we have to be careful as it is a bit confusing. But let's draw it step by step. Always remember that in a bridge rectifier, we always get the two special points as common anode and common cathode point. First, we connect the two diodes in such a way that their anodes will be connected to the same point. This becomes our common anode point. The remaining two diodes are connected such that their cathode terminal will be connected to the same point. This point becomes the common cathode point. We measure the output across these two points only. The remaining two points of intersection are connected to the secondary terminals of the transformer as shown. This forms a bridge rectifier circuit. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Let's study the working of the bridge rectifier. During positive half, point A attains higher potential with respect to point C. This makes the diode D1 and D2 forward biased, whereas diodes D3 and D4 are reverse biased. Thus diodes D1 and D2 
act as closed switch whereas the diodes D3 and D4 acts as an open circuit switch. Thus the current flows from the path S1 to point A, from point A to point B through diode D1, from B to point X, from X to Y through load, from Y to point D, from D to point C through D2 and from C back to secondary form of the transformer S2. Now we consider the negative half. During negative half, point C attains a higher potential with respect to A. This makes the diode D3 and D4 forward bias, whereas diodes D1 and D2 are forced in reverse bias mode. Thus diodes D3 and D4 act as closed switches and D1 and D2 acts as an open circuit switch. The current flows the path from S2 to point C, from C to point B through diode D3, from B to X, from X to Y through load, from Y to point D, from D to point A through D4 and from A back to secondary of the transformer S1. After studying the full wave rectifier and bridge rectifier, the question may arise in your mind that if the output of both circuits is the same, then why do we go for the bridge rectifier? Which one of them is preferred and why? Okay, okay, okay. The answer to this question is the bridge rectifier. Yes, the bridge rectifier is better than the full wave rectifier. Let's see why. First of all, we will use four diodes to create the bridge rectifier. Thus, bridge rectifier is nothing but the two full wave rectifiers combined together. So obviously, the output of the bridge rectifier is going to be better. One more important difference between these two rectifiers is that the transformers used. In a full wave circuit, we use a center tap transformer. During positive half of the input signal, only half of the secondary windings from A to C of the transformer conduct the current and windings from B to C remain inactive. The same way during negative half, windings B to C carry the current and A to C part of the transformer remains inactive. Thus, we only use half of the secondary transformer at a time, which reduces the transformer utilization. But in bridge, we use normal step-down transformer, which is directly connected to the diodes as shown. So the entire secondary transformer remains active during positive as well as the negative half of the input. This gives better transformer utilization than the full wave rectifier. Thus bridge rectifier is preferred in most of the cases over the full wave rectifier. After studying all the three types of rectifiers, let's see the difference between their outputs. But still we haven't obtained the pure DC signal. The output that we obtained after rectification contains some AC components. That is, we need to filter out the AC components from the rectified signal to get the expected DC signal which is done by the filter circuit. Here we use the capacitor as a filtering component. The capacitor blocks the DC and passes or responds only to the AC signals. Thus it is used as a filtering component which is connected to the load resistance in parallel so that it will provide a bypass row to the AC and we get the pure DC at the output. So let's study how the capacitor performs filtering. The capacitor makes use of its charging and discharging property when used as a filter. The capacitor can store the charge for a particular duration of time and then discharges through the available path when the source of energy is removed and gives us the filtering function. Now let's see the operation of the filter. We consider that it is connected with the full wave rectifier. Initially the capacitor is uncharged. During positive half cycle of input AC supply, diode D1 is forward biased and diode D2 is reverse biased. Hence D2 acts as an open circuit and all current flows through D1 only. The capacitor receives the current and starts charging until point A it reaches its peak value. After point A, input supply voltage starts to decrease but remains in positive half only. During this process, 
anode of diode D1 receives lower potential than cathode, hence D1 also goes into reverse bias and acts as an open circuit. D2 is already in reverse bias, hence both the diodes act as an open circuit. Thus the capacitor becomes isolated from the rectifier circuit and as it doesn't receive input, it slowly starts to discharge. Now only option left with the capacitor to discharge is through a load resistor. Hence the capacitor starts to discharge through the load resistor. As the capacitor discharges with a very low speed, cathode voltage of D1 remains considerably high as compared to anode voltage of D1. Hence D1 and D2 continue to remain in reverse bias till the end of the positive half cycle of the input signal. Now even as the negative half of the input cycle starts, the capacitor remains at higher potential than anode of D2. Hence diode D2 still remains in the reverse bias and the capacitor continues to discharge till B. But after point B, as soon as the anode voltage becomes greater than the capacitor voltage, D2 becomes forward biased and the capacitor starts to charge again as it gets supply from D2. Again, till the peak of negative cycle, the capacitor charges, the point is labelled as C. After point C, the negative cycle again moves upwards towards zero. Hence, anode voltage of D2 again becomes lower than the cathode voltage. As a result of which, D2 moves into reverse bias again. This is the duration of which again D1 and D2 both diodes are in reverse bias. Hence again the capacitor starts to discharge through the load resistor on the other side. Negative input cycle ends and again positive half of input AC signal starts. But diode D1 remains in the reverse bias only. When anode voltage of D1 becomes greater than capacitor voltage, D1 comes forward biased and D2 continues its journey in reverse bias state. Hence capacitor again starts getting charged from point D and this process continues. Thus by using the filter we managed to remove most of the AC components from the rectified signal. At the output of this filter we obtain the signal very similar to DC signal. Ideally we should get flat line at the output of filter circuit. But due to practical limitation of devices we get two levels of signals instead of getting a single level of pure DC as shown. This difference between upper level and lower level of the signal is called as ripple and amount of variation in the amplitude of DC due to improper filtering of AC power supply is called as ripple factor. The ripple factor of a capacitor is given by R is equal to 1 upon 4 root 3 into F into C into R where R is the ripple factor. F is the frequency of AC supply, C is the capacitor value and R is the load resistor value. Let's take a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. Rectifier is a circuit that converts AC signal into the DC signal. It mainly consists of the AC source, the transformer and a PN junction diode. There are two types of rectifiers, half-wave rectifier and full-wave rectifier. Half-wave rectifier rectifies only half of the input AC signal and full-wave rectifier performs rectification for the entire input. Bridge rectifier is a special type of rectifier which is commonly used for rectification in electronic appliances. Basic difference between the bridge rectifier and the full wave rectifier is the use of a transformer and number of diodes. Thus the bridge gives better output than the full wave rectifier. The rectified output is not a pure DC signal as it contains some AC components. It is passed through a filter circuit to remove AC components and at the output of the filter we get the pure DC signal. Capacitor acts as a filtering component whose charging and discharging property performs the filtering action and converts the rectified signal into pulsating DC.
the difference between the upper level and lower level of the pulsating DC is called as a ripple factor and is given by the formula R is equal to 1 upon 4 root 3 into F into C into R. Lower the ripple, better the output. Ideally, the ripple should be 0, but in practical cases, we observe some ripple as no component performs ideally.